Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, I hope you're having a great day or night in Jesus. Thank you so much for being with us. We're going to be looking at Byzantium today and its preservation of true biblical texts, the role that it played, and why you don't hear much about it as well. So we're on TexasReceptusBibles.com. I'm going to read a little bit, make some comments about it. But thank you so much for being here. So this is basically part of of the place where Textus Receptus Bibles were preserved for millennia or more was in Byzantium until the fall of Constantinople 1453. We may do a video too on Byzantium uh, scribal practices and scriptorians as well. So the mysteries of Byzantium, the path to Christianity. So where was the word of God before the Textus Receptus? This question has been asked thousands of times, and although we can simply say it was in the Byzantine text from the Byzantine Empire, and this is the reason it, sometimes majority text, Byzantine text, Textus Receptus are all used synonymously. Sometimes there are uh, certain minor divisions within that. So, you know, sometimes it's all in one stop shop, and sometimes it's not. Who were these people of the Byzantine Empire? How did they end up preserving God's word? The capital of the Byzantine Empire was Byzantium, oddly enough, which in the 4th century under the Roman Empire became Constantinople and after 1453 became Istanbul, Turkey. Some may know that, some may not. Constantinople was the last piece of the Byzantine Empire to fall. At its height, the empire encompassed the entire eastern Mediterranean region. It previously been part of the Roman Empire huge influence, huge missionary endeavors. The origins of Byzantium, now I'm not saying all of them were Christian in the biblical sense and all this. They did uh, keep speaking in tongues alive. They, they believed that was valid. Um, so the origins of Byzantium are shrouded in legend. Legend has it in 667 BC, uh, Byzus from Megara, a city-state near Athens, founded Byzantium when he sailed northeast across the Aegean Sea. The tradition tells that Byzus, son of King Nisus, figured you might just want to know this, planned to found the colony of the Dorian Greek city of Megara. Byzus consulted the Oracle of Apollo. Boy, wasn't that weirdly famous in the ancient world, which instructed Byzus to settle opposite the land of the blind, leading a group of Megarian colonists. But Byzus found a location where the Golden Horn, a great natural harbor, meets the Bosporus and flows into the Sea of Marmara, opposite Chalcedon of the very famous Council of Chalcedon. Is that 451 or 431 AD? About the dual nature of Jesus, I think it's 451. He judged the Chalcedonians blind not to have recognized the advantages of the land on the European side of the Bosporus had over the Asiatic side. Isn't that also called the Dardanelles or something? Within a thousand years of history behind it, Byzantium and the Byzantine Empire flourished for another thousand years from the 3rd to 4th century until 1453 when it's overthrown by Islamic Ottoman Turks. And that's when these Byzantine manuscripts flooded to the West. So the history of the Byzantine Empire was largely lost on Western culture. Very little was really known about it until the last century of our present day. And it still gets short shrift, I'll just tell you that. It was a very advanced culture. It was considered too exotic and foreign to the Western way of life was effectively cut out of Western culture as it grew. This not only helped by the Byzantine attitude to the West, which it saw as rather barbaric and undeveloped, at its height in the 6th, 7th centuries uh, AD, the Byzantine culture was far ahead of any of its Western counterparts. They had been overrun by the Visigoths and the Goths and the Ostrogoths and, you know, Goth bands and, all, and just all this. And we're in the midst of the Dark Ages where Byzantium had culture, carried Greek. The first centuries of Christianity, the Byzantine Empire had been the land of the Gentiles, where the Apostle Paul was appointed to convert the people of the Christian religion. This is where the story really begins. Now, I would say, too, just groups of Christians maintained true biblical manuscripts in many different languages all over the Eastern Empire, 
and they were splitting over icons, whether you should worship three-dimensional or one-dimensional, you know, icons, images, and all this, and then eventually the filicky clause, and uh, did the Holy Spirit proceed just from the Father or the Father and the Son, and that was eventually the split of Eastern and Western Christianity for good, even to this day, in a certain way. The Metropolitan of Greece and all this. And they really wouldn't see the primacy of the Bishop of Rome. They would say the five historic centers of Antioch and Jerusalem, on and on, would, Rome would be included in that. And so, but, uh, so there were manuscripts just everywhere. And uh, they really helped maintain the Textus Receptus tradition from where Paul came from. And we'll look at reasons why that was, because they were native Greek speakers. They weren't Latin like in the West. So God bless. Thank you for being here. Join us daily. We'll see you later. Please subscribe. Bye-bye.